Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We turn now to a ruling in a federal court that's dealt a major setback to the New York City police tactic known as stop and frisk. On Tuesday, U.S. District Judge Shira Shindlin of the Southern District of New York ruled police are not allowed to routinely stop pedestrians outside of private residential buildings in the Bronx. The stops are part of the so-called Clean Halls program, which has prompted allegations of police harassment by some residents who say they're being accosted outside of the buildings in which they live. Previous data on the New York Police Department stop and frisk policy has shown African American and Latino men make up a hugely disproportionate share of those stops. These are some of the voices of Bronx residents who either joined or supported the lawsuit in a video made by the New York Civil Liberties Union. This is the entrance where we come in and where my son also come in. I have to come to my bedroom window, which is on the inside of the courtyard, to make sure that he gets past safely, to run this way to come to my kitchen window, which is up there, to make sure that he gets through this way safely, then go to my hall door, my house door, to make sure that he gets upstairs without being stopped and harassed by police. You can't even walk here. You got to walk on eggshells. And it's not a pleasant experience to go through. And it's embarrassing when you have people over, they call it Fort Knox, and nobody wants to come and visit you, and your family doesn't even want you to live here. So when we see police, we don't like them, we, we don't want to talk to you, because all we've seen is you abusing us. People here pay rent, we're taxpayers, we work hard, and we deserve some kind of respect and consideration from New York's finest. And you have a lot of innocent bystanders and people that are broken, have a nine to five, that they feel that they're being harassed, and it's not fair. Nobody wants to come home and get up and go to work and have to go through that. In related news, the Bronx District Attorney's Office announced in September that it would refuse to pursue trespassing charges against people arrested at Bronx public housing projects unless the arresting officer submits to an interview. Officials found police had provided written statements indicating people were guilty of trespassing, even though they later turned out to be innocent. Democracy Now! invited the New York Police Department to join us on the program. They declined, saying the case is ongoing. For more, we're joined by Molly Cavell. She is staff attorney with the Bronx Defenders and part of the legal team in this case. Her clients are Bronx residents who were illegally stopped by New York City police as part of Operation Clean Halls, part of the Stop and Fisk program that allows police officers to patrol and in and around certain private apartment buildings. We're also joined on the phone by Abdella Turner, lives in the Bronx. His building is enrolled in the NYPD's Clean Halls program. He testified he was unfairly arrested outside a Clean Halls building while waiting for a friend who was inside. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Molly, let's begin with you. Uh, talk about the significance of this federal judge ruling. Well, Amy and Juan, it's very, very significant. This is the first, you know, true declaration by a federal judge that the Stop and Frisk program routinely violates people in New York's rights, that the Stop and Frisk program routinely you know, takes young black and Latino males off the streets. We're talking about how many arrests in a year, something like six or seven hundred thousand? Well, there's, there's 700,000 stops um, in 2011, which was a record-breaking uh, number. In 2012, the number has gone down some, but the, I don't think the final numbers are out yet for 2012. Yes. Uh, in, in, in reading uh, Judge Schindler's decision, uh, she also uh, uh, referred quite extensively to the, the Bronx District Attorney's Office qualms over how the police were conducting these uh, investigations, which is really unusual, the district attorney's position here. It's extremely unusual. I don't know of another case where the district attorney's office was testifying against the police department's policies. Um, the Bronx District Attorney had seen far too many cases be dismissed by judges who were furious that, that the police officers in those cases had either lied to, to district attorneys about where the person had been stopped or what kind of investigation the police officers had been doing. Um, and they were furious that people were being stopped on suspicion of trespass merely for being outside of a building that was enrolled in this program. This program called Clean Holes? Yes. The program is, um, there's 8,000 buildings in New York City, 3,000 of them are in the Bronx, and it's private landlords sign up their buildings for patrol by the NYPD. The police commissioner calls this sort of a doorman function, or says that the police are providing the same level of safety as a, as a private doorman. But that's ridiculous. Doormen don't carry guns, you know, in open plain view. Doormen don't throw you up against the wall. Doormen don't arrest you for no reason. Abdullah Turner. Um Tell us what happened to you. 
Good morning. Um, I was on my way to a party with a friend of mine. She had came to my house and woken me up to go to this party. So we said our goodbye to everyone in the house, and we made our way to the party. It took us some time. The party's not that far from my house, but we were talking. Once we got to the building, she stopped me and told me she had to return the sweater to someone else who lived in the building next door. So I waited for her outside. She went in the building, and I was on the phone with another friend. So while I was talking to my friend on the phone, pacing in front of the building, um, the cops came up behind me. I didn't even see them because I had my back turned to the way they approached. They got out the car, and one of them snatched the phone out of my ear. I turned around to see who snatched my phone, and it was a police officer. So I'm like, yo, what's going on? He stopped, and he was like, um, do you live here? I asked him, um, he asked me. I told him, no, I don't live here. I'm waiting for a friend of mine upstairs. You know, she's turning the sweater. We're going to a party in the next building. He asked me some other questions. He asked me for my ID. I gave him my ID. I answered his questions, and he took my ID and my cell phone and went into the building with another one of the officers. I was outside with the third officer who continued questioning me until my friend came out. My friend came outside, and she asked him what's going on, and I told him that was my friend I was waiting for. So after that, he radioed in to the other officer, telling them, you know, that he got the friend. They came outside immediately, and the officer who snatched my phone, he started asking her questions. So she answered his question. She gave him his ID, gave her, her ID, and they said all the stuff they had to say. They searched her for whatever she had on her. They separated us. They moved, had her against the wall, and they moved me to a car in front of the building. There, he pointed to a sign that said Operation Clean Hall and asked me that I know what it meant. I expressed to him that I didn't, and he then told me that I'm trespassing. I said, how can I be trespassing if I'm outside? So then he told me I'm going to jail. He told me to turn around, and he handcuffed me. I'm doing we have five seconds. What happened next? Um, five seconds. He, we went to the pre-stand. When I met the lawyer, Molly Cavell, and back and forth. I, I mean, I met my lawyer, Shana Kessler, and then back and forth to court like eight to nine times. And Let me ask very quickly, Abdullah Molly Cavell, what does this court ruling mean for the overall stop and frisk program? Ten seconds. Well, it sets a real tone that, that says that the stop and frisk program is on notice for being unconstitutionally broad and violating Fourth Amendment rights systematically. Um, there's a lot, there's a long way to go, but this is an incredible first step. Molly Cavell and Abdullah Turner, we thank you both for being with us. We are going to link to Juan Gonzalez's column at The New York Times. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.